the motion play <laughs>
Is anyone even here? <laughs> I've no. I can't. I don't know how to wait that out. Probably not. If that's the case. I don't think anyone's here, but we're gonna we're gonna crack on anyway. Um, so first of all, I'm playing. Hang on, I'll show you. Uh, the new King Gizzard album, which apparently is like non-copyrightable. So we'll see if. YouTube cracks down on me. Um, cool. I'm going to get rid of Tweet Deck and then turn the music off. Right, so today we're going to look at React. And I thought a good place to start might be go through the tutorial. Um, and it seems like this tutorial is quite good for covering some of the basics. Um, but I guess the one thing it doesn't give you is a sense of like how it how it gets put together, how you like write this code. Um, so I'm gonna go through that. Uh, so the first part is talking about. Um, having Node installed, so some of the tools that this uses um, Node. So if you haven't got Node installed, uh, I'd search for Node, and then uh, there's some download instructions um, it's on Linux, Windows, and Mac. So you can pick whichever one you want. Once you've got that installed, there's this tool called Create React App. So there's a lot of like boilerplate and like cruft and config to try and do create something in React. What this application tries to do is make it really easy to get started. So if you haven't used npm before, npm is a package like a uh, loads of different libraries and packages that people have already made um, and it's this is a tool that lets you like install them so here we're installing this create react app so I've already done that uh, so if you come over what I'm going to do is make another one uh, create react app and then test so this like grabs all of the dependencies you need for React, installs them, sticks it in like a, a new folder for you. So that way you don't need to in install things like Webpack or uh, I think it's got like Babel in, in installed. And then I can, so I can move into my test folder and run npm start. This creates a local development like server. So I could copy this and go to my browser. Oh, oh, it's already opened in my browser. So this is like um, what it builds. So it gives you like a website from the get go, which is quite nice. One of the um, criticisms for like React and creating things with React is all the boilerplate and config you have to get set up before you can even write some code. So this is a nice tool. Um, so I'm going to close that and I'm going to remove that for now because I've actually created another one called React Tutorial and I'm going to boot that up. Um, cool, uh, so that should be running as well. Yeah, so that's the same thing. Um, right. So what this gives you is a few different files. So you have a readme file which describes what's in 
um, create react out and how that works. We don't need that, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, we've got these two files, which are for um, starting the different scripts. So I did npm start. That what this actually does is this command here. I'm going to leave that there for now. Um, but then I'm probably going to so like if we look at um, we've got favicon an index file probably going to leave these here for now but I'm going to delete so all of these different things are for what we're seeing here but I'm going to delete these for now so we can start fresh so let's get rid of these so I'm just gonna, uh, let's do it from here so rm source Oh, okay. So I should have deleted everything in the source file. Cool. So you can see that's breaking now because um, we've just deleted everything. So let's start with the tutorial. So once we've like created our app, which we've just done, it recommends to delete everything. Then we're gonna have two files: um, a CSS file and then a JavaScript file. So let's create those now. Index.css and body. Let's make the background red for now, just to see if it's working. And then we need an index.js file. So let's go with that. Index.js. Um, the first three lines are going to be importing react, react dom, and then index.css. So, um, I'm wondering, oh yeah, cool, so, oh that's very bright, I'm changing that. Um, uh, what's, is there like papaya, yeah, papaya whip, that's nice. Mm, it's a lovely papaya whip. You notice how this um, app actually hot reloads, so every time I change something, it'll reload in the browser so then we don't need to keep refreshing or re-running any applications which is quite nice for development um, so this is what this import is doing so in the way that this project set up we're actually importing in JavaScript the CSS which is maybe a bit confusing um, but for now we're gonna go with it <laughs> um, so if I change anything here, it gets imported in here. This index.js will be the, the root file that um, is used at the start when we're like building our React application. So we've got React and React DOM. Let's go back to the tutorial. Um, so it, it, explaining like a bit like what React is, the way I see it is it's kind of like and the reason why it's so popular is it's quite focused in what it's doing. Um, it's specifically for creating like user interfaces, and or it's mostly user interfaces. But it uses this like component structure where you can like create some. It's one small bit that's going to do something, and then put it in different parts of your application, or create a component from multiple components. So it's like this component um, structure that I quite like with React. Um, here, the example is a shopping list and it kind of looks like HTML and I've done that on purpose. Um, it's not actually HTML, it's some, something called JSX, um, but because it looks like HTML it, it kind of makes, makes it easier to build because um, quite often when you're creating something in JavaScript you might be creating something that's going to turn into like HTML or something that looks like HTML in the end. Um, so here, one, one, one thing to point out as well is like, as it's not HTML, here we might use class um, to add a class, a, a CSS class to something, but here, it, because it's in JavaScript, we're actually using class name. And we can like inject different parts of different bits of code using curly braces. That's kind of like the way we put templates in. We'll get to that afterwards. Um, 
space. So the example usage here is uh, the name of the tag, and then they can they've given it this prop this parameter this property of name, and then the value is mark. Um, yeah. Yeah, so going back to the JSX bit, this here is actually what, so these these bits here, this code here is actually generating JavaScript functions, so react.create element div. All of this is the same as this up here. So it's quite, um, it's, it's, it's important to know that you're not writing HTML, you're writing JSX, which is JavaScript that gets converted into um, it's like nice syntactic, like syntactic so sugar or something. So it's like a, a special syntax, and then it gets converted into actual JavaScript. Um, but people rarely do this. Um, they normally go with the JSX version because it's easy to read and um, yeah, it looks more like HTML. Okay, so the project in the tutorial is making like a tic tac toe game. Um, and they recommend you start with some starting code, so let's go grab that. Um, and I'm going to paste uh, that in here. I think it should work. Let's see what's doing on my end. Okay, so I've got some stuff doing. They've probably got some CSS here as well. I'm going to grab that as well. Cool. And right, yeah, so I've got a similar thing, so I think I'm good to start. Um, right, so maybe just quickly go through what we've got here. So we've got a CSS file, um, changing some of the fonts and margins. Uh, we've got these different squares, and they've got like gray borders, which you can see here, and yeah, it looks like you can focus on the squares as their buttons. And then over here we've got some different components. The first part to know is this React DOM, so React DOM and React. So in, when we import React, that's for things like the components, but React DOM is here used for render. So this is saying in our HTML file here, we have this root um, div. So we're in HTML land now. Um, so this is like a just a standard HTML document. Um, but we're going to put all our React stuff on inside of this. So the way you do that is you say, you give it a reference to that bit. So document.getElementById root, and this could be anything. So this could be cool, and then this would be cool. Um, oh yeah, this is a good thing to point out. Um, so it's got some quite nice error handling stuff. So if we break something and come back to the page, you can see that it tells us and where the error is, it's not that useful actually what the error means here, but it's nice that it'll tell you if it's broken. So I'm going to set the ID back to cool. So this is saying inside of the cool element, render this game um, React component. Um, cool. So let's so let's look at the different bits. So we start a game. And so game is made up of different bits. You've got the board, you've got some info, and this the info hasn't been filled in yet. So we look at board, so you can see that this is the name of another React component and we've referenced it. So we come up to board, and then board has some different parts to it. Um, each one has render, and that's what's going to return. So for instance, if I come in here, go hello we're gonna see that come back here and 
what we can do is inspect this element and have a look. So you can see the different parts. We've got game board. Next play is the status. I'm gonna get rid of that. So we're looking at this um, game board thing. Um, so each row has three squares, and we use this dot to reference a function that's been created inside of a component. So we've got this board component, and then inside of it we can put any function we want. So hello world, and then we could return something. So like hello world. So if we wanted to, we could put in this over here and that will output hello world. So these curly braces uh, mean that it's going to like inject it into the JSX. So, and this can be any type of variable. Um, here, we've created a variable called status, and that's a string, and that gets put in, um, injected into the page. And these can be dynamic. So here we've got functions um, that they can change. So this is like, oh good, nice way of like templating. So creating like um, your content and then being able to inject different content and in, um, different information into the into like layouts. So let's get rid of that. So it looks like we want to be able to pass a value into the square. So we've got this render square as well. I'm going to get rid of hello world. So currently this is all returning the same thing even if we pass through 0, 1, 2. So we've got i here which could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Um, and square isn't doing anything with i, we're just returning square straight away. So if I put in a here, in theory all of these should be a, yeah. Um, so I think what we want to do is be able to pass through i which we're calling one, two, three, four, five into square. So the first thing we're going to do, I think, is that in the tutorial? Yeah, so the first thing we can do is give create a prop. So just like HTML has um, attributes, in JSX you have properties. So, and this, this can be named anything. So I could have this as uh, number. And then put in four, and or it could be value. And the way we access this inside of that component, so we've passed it through, is through uh, this dot props. And you can put anything on this dot props. So if I put multiple things, I can have different uh, props. And so this dot props, I have each of the props in a. JavaScript object, so this dot props dot um, value will come back with four, hopefully, yeah. Uh, but if we put name, it should come back with Zach. Yeah, Zach. Um, what we can do as well is use console.log here. And what I'm going to do is so this dot props you can grab at any point inside of this class. Um, in theory, I think so. Yeah. Um, so whenever this gets rendered, it'll call console.log. So you can see what's being passed through. So it's a JavaScript object. So I'm in the console now. Um, so for here, we just want to send through a value. And get rid of that. Now they're all four again, and it'd be useful to have these different numbers. So as we're passing it through in this function as i, we can actually send it through here as well. And then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which is pretty cool. Uh, so there's, I'm going to add some like interactive parts now. So that's one way of sending information and there's other ways of sending information into a React component. Um, so now we're going to look at how you could um, fiddle about with these different buttons. So like uh, HTML, you can do, you can 
create a property called onClick and then whenever we click something it will call a function so for instance if I create a function called handle click which all it does is um, do an alert of ah uh, then we could pass that through to onClick um, this dot onClick sorry handle click so I'm just moving those over so it's easy to read so in JSX the white space like HTML doesn't matter so you can be pretty free with that so whenever I click these now it calls that function um, and we can make this do different things in the tutorial Yes, they've just made it so so that, that you can send through an anonymous function as well. So instead of a named function, you could send through an anonymous function that just says console log wow. And then ooh, so I think I we got an extra yeah an extra bracket. So every time you click, you'd be like wow. That's a bit pretty small. Sorry. Go. I like to use the word handle. So like we got on click and then we're like handling that click event. So I quite like doing that. Um, but that's as a naming convention. Okay. So we had one way of handling data and that's by using props and sending through things as props. But there's another thing we can do as well, which is called state. So in in classes, you can create a constructor function, which always gets called when the class is created. Um, so, and you have to call super in it, which means because we're extending React component, it calls that. I'm not really sure, to be honest. but we can leave that for now. The important part is we can add something called state to our class or, or a React component. And this is another J JavaScript object. So we, and we could put anything in here. So hello world, for instance. Um, here, we set the value to null. So putting it, so this is like as the value value of the square itself, I think. Um, place pop props okay so um, instead of having the prop stuff on so instead of using props we can use state so this should come back as null which doesn't display as anything if I came in here and changed the state to 4 all of them would be Become four. Um, trying to look at what the aim of this is. I guess to just x them off. Rather, yeah, because we're doing tic tac toe. Um, so when when we do handle click, we can change the state. So it might be tempting to do something like this, where we change the state to x. I'm not sure if that works. That might actually work. Um, no, it doesn't. Okay. So um, even if this did work, it's not recommended. The way to change state is a function called set state. So you do this dot set state, and then you give it an object of all the things that have changed. So x. I think it's important to know that um, this is actually adding to the object. Ooh. Cannot read property set state when defined. Oh, okay. So this one's quite interesting. So this here 
is not the this that we think it is. So what we have to do in our construct constructor, which is pretty nasty, is bind this. So whenever we use handle click, it will have the this from the class rather than the this from the on click event, for instance. Um, so we got a way of like clicking, which is pretty nice. Uh, just looking at the yes, yeah, so they talk about the dev tools, and I think there's some React dev tools as well. So if you go to Chrome extension React dev tools, there's some different. Uh, React stuff that you can install, and then when you come into your console by going more more tools, developer tools, it's over on the right, and that lets you look at um, them as React components, which is pretty useful. And you can see like the different props that are coming through. So you've got class name on click, um, you can see what's being given to Square, um, zero, and what the state is. Cool. Um, so now we're looking at the one one thing it's pretty it's okay having the state of what's being clicked on the button itself but if we want to have logic in tic-tac-toe where we can know which like are, are certain buttons in a row um, to be able to win or lose then it'd be nice if the state was higher up so maybe on this board or even on game so we define our state there um, here they're saying put it on the board so we're going to do that so I'm going to grab that so here we're going to create another constructor and this time so it looks like it's sending through props I don't know if that's optional but I didn't do it before I think uh, did I talk about that? leave that for now um, I think yeah I think you're supposed to do that so send through props to the component uh, anyway so we've got squares and what this is doing is creating so I could console log this out actually it's creating an, ar an array of nine items and they're all null let's have a look at that so it's just an array of nine items they're all null um, so that's like the initial state of all of these buttons, I think. Um, so it's the equivalent of doing no, 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 like that, all the way up to nine. Cool. Um, I think that's that at that point. Um, yeah. So the the way they're going to fill it in is O and X and then null. Um, so instead of sending through, uh, yes, yeah, so instead of sending rendering the um, squares with props here, this time we're going to do um, it with state. So we can do this dot state, but squares and like pretty much at any time you can get props or state by doing this dot state or this dot um, props to so here we're bringing back this dot state and inside of state we've got the squares array with nothing in it um, so what this is doing is it's saying because we've got 0 to 8 we're saying get the array position of each one so zero, one, two, one, 0 to 8 and then pass it through to the square so in theory if we go so if I fill some stuff in no x no o no no a b oh it didn't work <laughs> Um, all right, I think this is because we haven't moved back to props. So we're sending this through as value. 
but then if we come back to our square we're still using the state from the individual button so we probably want to remove this now and so I don't need the handle click stuff anymore might not need the constructor either and this would become this.props.value because we're sending it through here again there we go cool so we've got our state on our board but then we can send it through to the other components and this is kind of a standard pattern for doing data in react where the components that you're uh, rendering inside of another component tend to take the data from the big the um, nested components so here board has lots of squares in it and we keep our state on board handle our state here and then send it through into the other components um, right so what is next I guess I need to change my code back to making it all null can I remember how to do that it was 9 and then fill null I think yeah okay Right, so we can send through, we can populate all of our squares based on state on the board. Um, so now what we're going to do is that handle click stuff. So I did that binding before, but I guess also you could. Let's really look at that again, actually, because that's quite an interesting thing. So before I um, had a constructor, and inside of that constructor, I was doing this dot handle click bind this um, that was to make sure that the this that we were talking about was on the class um, so whenever this gets called whenever this function gets called the this that's inside of it is actually the one on the class um, I think also you could do something like that and it would solve that problem um, so this for instance I think that's because when you use these um, arrow functions then it binds this it does this bind of this automatically I might be wrong about that um, but I'll tell you, let's bring i through and just log that out to see if it, it's working I is not defined. Um, where are we getting I from? Render square, on click. Oh, okay, so it's actually putting the on click uh, on the render square itself. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put brackets here. They don't actually make any difference, but I think it's just easier to read. Um, so handle click yeah so now so not only can we send through values as properties we can send through functions so we're sending through this on click prop um, which we can use on our button so we can do on click equals this dot props dot on click and this will whenever we do a click on the button, call the function that was sent through as a prop, so here. Um, I guess now we need a handle click function. Um, and so here our functions are like outside of the square, but we can still um, interact with them. Cool, so it seems to be working. Right. Um, so yeah, we've got this function handle click, and we're giving it as a property to Square, and then Square is calling it. So then we can handle all of our state and like um, logic on the board level rather than the Square level, and trying to send it back, um, which is pretty useful when we start to think about the board as a object and like how you win the game 
what are the rules because the square on itself doesn't need to know um, what the rules of the tic-tac-toe game are uh, so here we got three new parts so we're doing slice to get a new version of so I think slice with nothing in it will give you a copy of an array so we're taking the squares from the state and then we're putting it into this variable and then for the the index that we've sent through so it could be 0 to 9 um, we're setting it to x and then we're doing this this dot set state that we had before and setting the squares to the new new squares so I'd be like tempted to be like new squares rather than just squares for clarity and then you can see that we're setting the original squares to this new squares um, the one thing with the state is um, you don't as we said before you don't change the state directly you're gonna create a new state and then set that state as the new state um, so it's like an idea of things can't um, you always have to create a new version of the state rather than change the existing state which is still confusing to me but so now we're back to where we were before but this state has been handled on a higher level component on the board. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so is the idea of immutability for the um, state stuff. So we've got two examples, which are actually pretty good. So you could get a player object and change the score, and then the score's changed to two. But um, the way that React wants you to do it is actually to take that object and create a new object with that data. Um, and they're saying it's easier to undo, redo, um, easy to track what you're doing. And I think in terms of performance, if you know, um, it's easier for it to know what has been changed and then only update the things that needs to change. Um, so let's talk about functional components, so if we go to square, so the next bit, render square, where's the square, here we go, um, so we're not actually using this handle click anymore, so we can get rid of that, cool, um, and then the functional component, so if you have a component that doesn't have any other functions that ren than render, one thing you can do is create a function that just returns JSX and it is supplied props and um, then you and then you can just return JSX. So here, because we've only got a render function and we're using props, we could actually do something like function square. and then the parameter that's sent through is props and then we can return all of this so this is at this point now doing the, the same thing um, it's just a function instead of a class um, so if, actually let's just check that's working so it's not working um, Okay, so instead of this dot props, because we're sending it through as props, it would now just be props dot value. There we go. Um, um, yeah, so uh, what what's the good thing about this? Um, I guess it just looks cleaner for one. Also, it's clear that this um, component isn't going to have its own state or any logic outside of just rendering something. Um, I think the idea is you always know if you send it a certain props that it will create the same thing so there might be some kind of optimization there um, yeah it's just saying clean up code uh, yeah so I guess we could do this as well although no I, I prefer it so you can read it 
Um, cool. Okay, so that's a functional component where you and there's another way of writing it as well. You could have a variable called square that is, um, and then have a an anonymous anonymous function. So that's one way some people do it as well. We'll just leave it like that. Um, so because it's tic-tac-toe, you take it in turns playing the game. Now we're going to add some state to determine whose turn it is. So x is next. So the first move will be whoever is x. Um, so we're going to define at the board level this x is next um, value. Okay, and then every time we click, so every time we click, we're gonna look at this and decide whether or not it's gonna be x or y. We can use a ternary um, if statement. So if you're not familiar with ternary, um, we can do an if else statement like this. So let a equal. Um, so we can create a, and then we can do a equals cool, and then b equals wow. So if this happens, then we set a to that. Um, we can also write the same these lines here using a ternary operate um, ternary if statement. So we go a is equal to the condition that we're looking for. So if this was so if that was the if statement, that's really so the first thing is the condition again, and then we use a question mark to say that we'll return if this is true, we'll return cool, and then otherwise with a colon or else and we'll return that. So this line here on 36 is the equivalent of these lines here. So it's a way of writing things shorter and in React it's used quite a lot for templates but here we're using it to determine to write whether or not we want x or zero. Because if it is x then we'll go with x otherwise it's uh, cool. So let's just see what that's doing. Um, it's because it should, in theory, be doing the same. Okay, so this is this dot state dot is next. So it should be doing the same thing. Uh, we don't at any point tell it to change to the next person's turn. So it's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to say, as well as setting squares here, we're going to create. Um, So if it's true and we click, then after we've clicked once, it should be zero. So it's the next person changing. So we can say new x is x is next equals, and we can um, flip that true to false by doing this dot state dot x is next. Um, if you haven't seen that before, um, so if I have true and I put an explanation in front, it reverses it. So if I store true in A, and I do A and then I do. So this is a way of flipping from X is next to true to false. So now we can do X is next. Is that. And missing a comma. So in theory now, whenever we click, we'll get alternating X. Yeah, and that's kind of the way tic-tac-toe works. So that's cool. That's working. Um, we can also go into the render function now and update who the next player is. So if we go, um, so if we use, so one thing we could do is use plus and then this start state. Dot x is next 
Um, so we're writing the same code now. So we had this code before where we, if it, x is next is true, then it's x, otherwise it's at zero. So I'm going to make a function now to move this out. So it's going to be called um, player uh, x or o. <laughs> That's a terrible name for a function. No, we'll leave, but we'll leave it for now actually. Okay, we'll just keep it simple. Um, so if the state is x, um, then return x, otherwise return o. So now if we look here. Oh, wait. What have I done wrong? Do I need to put brackets around this? I think I need a bracket. So now it tells you which player is taking a turn. There's also a nicer way of doing this. So let's say we wanted like quotes around it, we'd have to do something like this, where where we have to like use the pluses. There's a other way of doing it where we use the back a back tick and then we can use curly braces, a bit like the way React works, but you need to put a dollar sign before anything you're injecting in. So this is the same, right? Um, I'm actually I'm gonna move that out. So we've got this bit of logic that says that converts um, the x state to whatever character it is. So I'm gonna have like convert x uh, player state to player uh, letter. That's Horrible actually, isn't it? But <laughs> we'll go with it um, and have this return that, and then we can use the same code for both places. Forgot to put this in. Let's go with this here. All right. Okay. So declaring a winner. So. At the moment, if I go, duh, duh, uh, there's no way the board knows that we've won. So this is going to be working out who's the winner. I'm not even going to try and write that code. <laughs> so copy and paste that. So I guess we could walk through it. Uh, that's interesting. They've moved it outside of. I wonder why they've, so here they've told you to move the function outside of the class. I wonder why. Um, let's do it. I guess it's because this logic isn't dependent on rendering that component maybe. Don't know. So we've got, do I even care about what that, if that code works, then that code works. Let's just ignore it for now. So we can calculate the winner. So let's grab this. So by default, the state will tell you which, uh, where are we here? The status is gonna tell us which play is going to play. Um, So I'm just going to replace that because I've changed their code a bit. But if someone does win, I'm going to do calculate winner, then say who the winner is. So it's, oh, I don't need to refresh there. Um, so let's make it so I win. So winner x. Uh, but you can still keep going. I've also noticed you can overwrite them, which is interesting. Um, so now to stop us from being able to keep clicking once we've won, we can check whenever we click uh, if 
if we've won yet or not. So I'm going to grab this bit. So if we've won or oh, okay, this is cool. So there was the two things we brought then. So you can keep clicking if you won, and you can also keep clicking on to the same thing. So this is doing both. It's saying if we've won, return and don't do anything. Or if we haven't won, check if there's anything that isn't null. So if we've got X or O in there, and if that's the case as well, don't do anything. So this should solve both problems. Yeah, so now I can't click in this anymore. And then also, I can't click any further if we've won. Um, so that would be cool to have like a history of the uh, history of the different games, maybe. I don't know if I give a shit about that, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, how long have we got left and what's more important? Um, it's all right. Yeah, let's fucking do it. Let's do it. Um, yeah, so it'd be nice to have like an array of all of the states in like history. So then you could see like who's been winning. So if we go history and create an empty array. Um, okay, so they're starting, instead of having squares, they're starting because the first one is empty. Uh, they're starting with that one, and I've fucked up my windows. There we go. Cool. So the first history item is this empty squares array. Um, Nice, I think that's the same. Uh, now instead of this dot state, I think we have to look at this dot history. Uh, squares, this dot state dot squares. Is that not wrong? Ooh. Trying to work out the history bit. So whenever we render, let's just skip back a bit. I think I missed something. Um, Okay, so we're moving this all to game. So it's going up even further than board. So, right, that makes sense. So, because the now we're going to have this history and we're going to send through. Do we send it through? When do we send it through? Right, we're bored. Okay, um, so instead of so we'll do this dot props instead of oh wrong bit. Uh, so we're leaving that there now, and then this dot props. Okay, so at some point we're going to send through to the board the game logic. Uh, this dot props on click. So we're moving everything up, as well as the, I guess we would, so we'd also move this handle click. Um, to game. Do we have render still? Yeah. So we've got game. Where's game? Here it is. I'm gonna put that there, and then right. Okay, I think I think we're good. Um, so then we're gonna look at adding like this history part. So inside of render, we take the current history state and. Uh, 
the current one is the last item of the array. That's what this dot lamp dot one is, is the last item. And we calculate the winner and get the status. We can send that through. Keep scrolling up weirdly. So we can send that through to the board. Uh, oh, right, okay. And then status. Put that there instead. Um, so now the logic's going to be so handle click. We've still got that, I think. Yeah. And I've got this custom function, which I'm going to put here. There we go. Um, cool. So now I sent it through to the board. I uh, need to update the board to use just props. So we don't have the state part in the board anymore. So we get rid of that. And get rid of that, I think. Yeah. And render square's still the same. We're sending through props. The squares. So we just send through squares? Yeah. Okay. Is this working or is it still broken? Still broken. This dot slot state dot squares dot slash. Okay, so the handle click is not functioning right. So we have to change that. Yeah, so we grab the history and get the current squares and then so this is new squares. Get rid of that. And then we're also gonna set the history. Because we're now we're storing the history as a state, not just squares. So we take the current history and then we can cut on the new um, history that we created. It's pretty cool. Um, moves. So I want to show the moves. Is that working now? It is. Okay. Um, I'm just going to copy this, don't know what this is doing yet. Previous moves, okay. Um, cool. I'm going to put this in here. And that gets sent through to, so this is creating different list items. We're mapping over, so one concept in React is mapping over a list and then returning different items so you can like take a list of things and create a list of JSX items. So this is moves. Oh a missing key. That's interesting. So the way React works is each item in the list needs a key. Um, So we could do new, maybe. What would they recommend anyway? Yeah, key move. Um, because these are a bit, this is a way for React to know what it's updating. Um, and just errors without it. It's good for performance. Cool. I don't think these buttons do anything yet. No. We've got this function called jump to which we haven't defined yet but every time we add in moves you can see the different um, yes I didn't know one on that one um, step so we're gonna add something else to the state step number This is going to be what position we are, I think. So this is like the time traveling thing. I'm not really sure why this is useful, to be honest. I guess today you can go do, 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 and then go move. Wait, no, it's not, is that not working yet? Oh, so we have to take the step number into account for the history because currently it's just going to stay at the same history. 
got really confusing really quickly. And step number, step number is history. no longer going to be that, it's going to be based on the step number. So instead of going to the last one, we're going to wherever we've decided that um, we want to move, so we, so we can move back in time. I think that's it. Um, So like towards the end, the tutorial got pretty confusing. I'm not really sure if it showed the benefits of like props and state as well. So maybe um, do something separately where explain that better. Like when should you use state and when should you use props? Um, yeah, in general, that's it. I'm going to play King Gizzard and listen to this. <laughs> Hang on. Shit. Yeah. Alright, see ya. <laughs>